What's up, guys? Of course, welcome to our Pokemon Wi Fi battle with yours, true love, of course, this character. And today, we got ourselves a match against Titan Atlas. And it wasn't too long ago I uploaded a battle with him, but this battle was something else, and I really wanted to upload that, upload it because of that. And yeah, I'm just overall, Titan Atlas is a very, very good player, as you guys may know if you've been following me for a while. And he's definitely, definitely being a player that is, is very good at finding balance in the team and uh, you know I'll definitely have a huge respect for this guy for that very reason so we're looking to his team here we got Muck, Sudowoodo, Fracture, um, Muna, Pomushana, um, Lectabus and Torterra so a very very chunky team looking at it and actually a lot of weaknesses to Ice or not a lot of weakness, but two Pokemon that could be French I'll do it so I knew I can get a lot of momentum with that I myself using my Machoke my Heatmore, Persian, Sneasel, Cricketune, and Swallot. And just looking through my team here, honestly, I have a very, very weak stamina wise team. It can put a lot of pressure, but I don't have any Pokemon that can take potential hits. I look at his team, his team is really chunky. So I need to break asunder the team early on, play very aggressive, and hope that eventually that you know, I can break apart so much so that I can find a, can, can find a footing. And Fracture is the major threat on his team. One Dragon Dance is basically enough to outspeed my Sneasel, so my Sneasel need to be out before he actually pulls something like that up. But I'm gonna start off with my Mad Choke and hoping that whatever he's gonna start with is gonna be enough to actually be dealing with it. So, with all this in mind, let's go. So, he's gonna start off with the Torterra, and basically, you know, Torterra is generally dangerous. Um, there is not a whole lot I can do to it. I can fret it with the Dynamic Punch. We was something I was going at, really hoping it went for Stealth Rocks or anything like that. Luckily for me, that is exactly what it does. I'm just gonna go for the Dynamic Punch! Because of No Guard, you know, this is just going to do the trick. He's gonna be confused and he's not feeling that comfortable staying in. He is able to soak those hits though, so that's very, very impressive to say the least. But at long go here, there is no way that he's gonna get momentum out of my choke. So he's just gonna go to Jeff. I did predict something like that and went for a knockoff, and it doesn't do enough. It doesn't even do. I was really hoping, I'm not gonna lie, I was hoping for 50%, but Mega Kick and Knockoff basically are the same strength. Yes, Machoke is freaking punching a Mega Kick. I want you guys to look at that. He is punching it. But anyway, I do realize eventually that Knockoff is actually slightly stronger. And um, he's gonna go for Moonlight here, and basically, I knew what he was gonna be able to set up. I had no Pokemon that could come in and threaten him, so I had to rely on going for the Dynamic Punch, hoping for confusion, and basically, and I mean basically, threaten him enough to find a footing through that. Um, rely on hacks is, well, it's not my style, I know, but at the same time, I had so few things of going for. So basically, gonna go for knockoff again. I don't want to switch out to Sneasel, I knew that he could predict me or have the stored power as a hitting move and it does a good chunk of damage. I should definitely try to predict that, but at the same time, this thing could pack Dazzling Gleam which in, at the same boat means that my Sneasel could get one shot. So I couldn't risk that and a major threat is all the way, he's gonna go to his Aldrin, the Electabuzz and I was just basically standing in, I was definitely feeling that Selfie, the Machoke has done its part, it has taken out the Pokemon it wasn't supposed to and it's done a lot of damage to his team but the Volt Switch is not enough to kill me probably with a physical build and uh, I'm just gonna go on yet again for the Mag Punch and what do you know now the freaking <laughs> Torterra is in a bad range I was basically thinking that alright I am in a very honest chance here of taking him out which is just awesome honestly so like I said I was basically gonna try to fart this thing off but what do you know it hits itself with confusion and that is awesome. And I'm gonna finish it off with a knockoff. So selfie, the Machoke is taking out two Pokemons. And I get a lot of momentum from this. And like I said, um basically gonna fall off him now. And while doing this, I do realize that my physical wall is out of the way. I have nothing to soak physical hits. And I think that realization kinda it, it dawned on me at the same time. And um yeah, I basically got a bit stressed here, so he's gonna go to his Underminer! And I myself just gonna frame him out with my Sneasel, because it's a Sneasel. It, it, there is no way that he can deal with this in the long run. And I know I can probably do the combinations on him with an Ice Punch, Ice Shot, it should be 
well more than enough to take him out. And I think I misclicked here. I was going for Ice Punch, but for some reason I went to Ice Shard and it doesn't really matter, but I have no idea. Just Ice Punch would do double the damage, but this thing is still... Pop My Sherry is just... It is danger. It is true danger in its purest of forms. And I really need Sneasel against the Underminer or its Fracture. So I'm just going to go to Swaggy, which is the Swallow, because it's such a swag. No, really, I, I have such a unique moveset for this Pokemon, that I'm just going to go straight on at it. And he's going to go for Stone Edge, and I'll say it does a very, very fair amount of damage. More than I wanted to. Um, I think I am Black Sludge set on this, and um, I do affect the counter and um, specially oriented move. So I'm just going to go for Giga Drain, eating up this poor, poor Sudowoodoo. Which actually will miss his Stone Edge. No, he will not. Of course he won't. Why did I say that? He hits it. He lands it. My swaggy, swaggy, swaggy is definitely in a bad range. And like I said, I don't have um, a, what's it called? A physical wall for this. And uh, I basically was feeling that right. He's gonna get a lot of damage through my team just by doing the damage alone. And he's just gonna switch out to his Slurp to Muck. And of course, Muck has such a Great, 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 great special defense that, um, yeah, he's gonna make a comeback. He's gonna make a dead comeback here because there is no way I can break a Sunder's Pokemon. My only move that could hurt it is the Ice Beam. And like I said, still, especially defensively heavy, is just, it's not my way. So I'm gonna go to my whoop because that is how it sounds. Cricket Tune is awesome. And uh, there is not a whole lot of Cricket Tunes can do th in this battle, through and through. I mean, Cricket Tune is just ah, uh, it it's really bad, sadly. And I will just go for a knockoff, shutting down his uh, Black Sludge. I thought that was the best options I had because there is no way my Cricket Tune is gonna do anything here. And yeah, it, he's gonna go down. Yeah, I have Felsting on this um, Scar Felsting. I hoped that was gonna work, but not this time. So I was bank basically banking on a choice bandit double edge to take out the muck from this range. And, and trap. Yeah. That has just happened. So I was banking on Iris the Persian to actually pull this off. And sadly, I do lose my fastest Pokemon that should have annihilated his whole team. And I have forced to go to Arwig, and I'm actually just going to go for an Ice Shot because it could pack the Shadow Sneak, and that is something I don't want to risk. And basically that Double Edge that did not kill was very very bad, because I am now in a position where I lost a lot of Pokemon, and I can't keep up with the pressure. And it's just going to go for Volt Switch, I decided to go for a knockoff, and he this basically shows me that he, that thing is Scarfed. I only got Heat more, and my... Uh, swag left and uh, I know that he's freely now to go for his underminer the fracture and go freely for a sucker punch or I mean dragon dance and basically I was banking on that this ice beam from the swaggy 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 swallot is going to be enough to finish it off and um, yeah the dragon dance is very very intimidating isn't it and um, the ice beam is gonna come here and I mean it's a powerful move yes but Sally, it is not enough. Swaggy or the Underminer actually live with what is I think that's one third, which it's not bad. But at the same time, I'm basically gonna hope that he's gonna miss the dual chop, which is not a possibility because Fracture is just that kind of Pokemon. There is just no way of surviving that. So my last Pokemon is Levin, which is the um, Heat More, and I'm gonna bank on this Sucker Punch to be able to finish it off. And if it does that, you know, then we're gonna get a major, major momentum going anyway because I am assault vested but due to me being specially oriented I will do far far less damage than I wanted to and this dual job will finish me off so we went for a position where I was in a 6 to 4 against him with this, my macho basically slaughtering whatever comes in to well a 3-0 in my opponent's favor and it was a very good battle like I said not me having a defensive wall made the openings very very bad for me and it was something I didn't realize until it was too late and I was struggling, I was struggling really bad but I think my opponent played a very very good game and he deserved this, he definitely did. So yeah, I was really glad I got the chance to use Swallot, honestly. I think Swallot is one of those Pokemon that just 
he's just such a strange bean, honestly. And uh, the special oriented one is one I actually prefer, but um, probably not in this battle. It had a rough time here, and my opponent is a good player too. And I think his stamina of his team definitely over overwhelmed my team in the long run, because this was basically a 25 turn battle at best. And I think that's just about what my team could take before it falls asunder. So, you know, jokes on me here because I definitely should have kept something more bulky in my team. But I just, I, I really needed momentum. I knew exactly how I needed to play to kind of win this battle, and it worked in the beginning. But um, my player that I went against is just that much more experienced, so he could definitely pull that off and you know survive the onslaught that I was going at. And I think he won fairly in that session. Um, if my person would have taken out the Makun Double Edge, I probably still wouldn't have won because of that Electabuzz being, well, Scarf, which means it would outspeed me anyway. So, Titan Atlas, that was an awesome game. Thank you so much for that battle. And if you like this battle, make sure to leave a like, of course. And if you're new to the channel, make sure to, of course, subscribe, because I do upload these battles, and I'm awesome in that fashion. I have no idea what I said. <laughs> but basically, guys, um, don't forget about my stream tomorrow. I'm going to stream bit earlier, but you know, I'm gonna keep you guys posted on the channel, of course, as always, and on Twitter, so make sure to follow me there if you haven't before. You should follow me everywhere, people. <laughs> but anyway, guys, I want to thank you all for watching, and remember, the sky is the limit, so good guys, and take care, right? Bye.